Some people would prefer that I never make another show again. But that is not what freedom of expression is all about. I'm Narasis, also known as Christopher Parson, and this is The Grand Experiment. Welcome back. And once again, I welcome you all to the first episode of the second season of The Grand Experiment. It's been far, far too long, my people. The last time we spoke was the four-part episode 14, which, in which I caught you up, all up with events up to that point. <clears throat> this episode will be a multi-part as well, but hopefully structured and filmed a little bit better. Some of you may have wondered why I didn't come back sooner than this, and hopefully the recap will address this. But first, like always, I have some people to thank. And I'm sorry about rubbing my nose, it's itches for some reason. First of all, I'd like to thank, of course, the man, Mr. Dusty Beard, for always being the trendsetter. If you haven't been living under a rock these days, you may have seen the trailer for The Dusty Show Season 2 coming later this summer. I invite you all to check it out when it debuts. I know I will be. Normally, this is where I would be plugging Chris Reynolds' Blue Collar Brawler Wear, but since I haven't heard any new developments out of BCBW, the, Caesar, the season is sponsored by, until further notice, the Friends of the Grand Experiment. These are the people that specifically requested that the show return. I thank you all for your continued support, and I hope you all get a chance to spread the word and take this show worldwide. It's probably not going to happen, but it'd be cool. Sometimes I'm asked the question, why do you call your show The Grand Experiment? Well, when I first conceived the show, I used my laptop to film it, and I called it The Grand Experiment. It worked, and from there came the episodes that followed, including the very beleaguered and sound-deficient episode 14. But that's what the show was all about. Trial and error. In many of my early episodes, I talked about wrestling, a subject that not everyone could relate to or enjoy. Um, the show also became a sounding board for a group now known as the BBL, of which I'm not actually permitted to speak about. But let me just say that if you find your shrubbery has been set on fire, the BBL has put you on notice. So shall this show be a trial and error experiment, experiment and experience as well? Besides, calling the show the Christopher Parson Experience didn't seem to have as much appeal and intrigue. So now, let's recap the year and three months that have passed in a little segment I like to call Back in Time. Back in February, I began talking about my upcoming trip to Florida with my girlfriend Amanda, my friends Alan and Christine, and their daughter Alyssa. We had a blast. It was the first time in 13 years I had taken a major trip, so it was a welcome change to the paradigm. We went to all four Walt Disney World Resort parks, including the Animal Kingdom, which wasn't there during the last time I was there in 97. We, um, we had fun at all of the parks, but the one park that stood, out, that stood out among all the rest was the experience that we had at Epcot, which is funny because when I went there for the first time, we went to Epcot and I hated it. If you haven't seen it, I have a music video on here called um, the Epcot Adventure 2010. Um, yeah, check it out. Um, there's a, it shows a, a music video set to Lovers in Japan by Coldplay, and it's on the Step Forward Entertainment page if you want to find it. But uh, we came home, and we took in our first Gen Con as a couple, Amanda and I did. And we had a blast with it, so much so that we, we've organized a group for the 2011 called AC Consortium. And um, if you'd like some more info on that, just message me on here on Facebook and I will catch you up. Then afterwards, Amanda and I um, celebrated our one-year anniversary. And we had an interesting winter together, as all of us did. And we started longing for some more time together. Around March, we started looking at apartments, and I thought we were going to end up at Traditions, to be honest, but somehow we ended up here at Lakeview, much to my surprise and delight. We signed the lease as of April 30th, and we moved in shortly hereafter, and I love this place, and so does Amanda, and we're planning to stay here. And speaking of Amanda and I, people keep asking me when I got married to her. We aren't married yet. We have moved in together, but we aren't married yet. I probably get asked this question at least once a week, if not more. And I just want to make this clear. I haven't proposed yet. Is it going to happen? 
more than likely. And if it is, I promise I will not keep people in the dark about it. But please let us get there before asking me. And now, it's time for my current events and opinion section, which I'm now calling Life or Something Like It. 521.11 was supposed to be a momentous day, according to Family Radio, who I saw driving through the streets of Indianapolis with their slogan, The Bible Guarantees It. But if you read scripture, it clearly states that no one will know when it's coming. It was, like most things of that nature, false prophecy. I prefer to take the notion that the world can come to an end at any time, so stop worrying about it. Speaking of religion, I want to get this off my chest. I believe as I do for my own reasons. I am a willing witness for my faith, but I believe that you can only witness to people that are willing to listen. A lot of people nowadays are not willing to listen, and it creates problems when people witness because it feels like they're imposing on people's religious freedoms. This is my philosophy. I believe as I do, you may believe as you wish to. I will not try to impose my beliefs on anyone unless they wish to know more. By that same token, I want people who do not believe as I do to understand that and not try to impose their beliefs on me. It's simple equivalent exchange and respect for people's rights of religion. By the same token, I believe that discriminating against someone for their religious beliefs is wrong. People believe that if a person worships Satan, for instance, by proxy that person must be a horrible person. I don't believe that. I once was friends with a guy who um, turned out to be a Satan worshipper during um, a play. And he was a very pleasant person to talk to, very bright. And um, I made it clear that I would not try to convert him as long as he didn't try to the same thing. We agreed and we were friends, you know. Just because someone does or doesn't believe as you do doesn't mean that they should be discriminated because of it. In other news, former pro wrestler Macho Man Randy Savage died of a heart attack following a car crash. I follow, I fondly remember the Macho Man for his intensity, his wildness, his Slim Jim commercials, ooh, yeah, and his on screen relationship with Miss Elizabeth. Macho is, was, and will always be known as an icon in the wrestling business and was a trailblazer for those to follow him like Steve Austin, The Rock, Mick Foley, and he does deserve a place in the hallowed halls of the WWE Hall of Fame alongside such greats as the Nature Boy Ric Flair, Andre the Giant, and of course, Hulk Hogan. Thank you, Randy. We will never forget the Macho Man. That's all for this first part. I'm going to, this is probably going to be a two or three part episode, so I will now send you to part two. See you shortly, folks.